In this video, I'll be upgrading my Gigabyte Aero 15X laptop. I'll be replacing the Thermal Paste with Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, as well as upgrading the memory, Wi-Fi card, and adding in a new SSD. I'll go through all the selected parts and tell you why I've picked them, and I'll also show before and after performance in terms of thermals, gaming, and video editing to show you how the upgrades help. As you may know, I recently got a Gigabyte Aero 15X laptop, primarily to be used for editing these videos while travelling. Out of the box, the Aero 15X comes with one 16GB stick of DDR4-2666 memory, so it's running in single channel. As I've shown in a previous video, we can get a nice performance improvement with dual channel memory. First I'll go through all the parts I've bought for the upgrade, walk you through the upgrade process, and then go through some benchmarks to show the before and after differences. After contacting Gigabyte support, they advised that only the following memory kits are officially supported. If you're looking at upgrading memory, I'd highly suggest going by this list, as there are many stories online of people trying to install other modules only to find they don't work. I'm sure other modules out there do work, but if you can get officially supported memory, then may as well to try and avoid possible problems, but more on this later. My laptop has the 16 gig stick of V-Color memory listed down the bottom. Originally, I thought I'd just buy a second stick of it and be done. But as it turns out, no one really seems to be selling them. They seem a little rare, which sucks. My next plan was to buy two replacement sticks, then sell the V-Color one later. I found that Amazon was selling the Kingston memory listed on the supported list. So bought two 16 gig sticks from the US shipped here to Australia. You can check the links in the description for updated pricing on everything I've used in the upgrade too. Out of the box, the Aero 15X also came with a 512GB NVMe SSD, which performs pretty well, but it does have two NVMe-capable M.2 slots in total. While this is honestly probably enough space for me, SSDs have lowered quite a bit in price lately, and I thought having a nice large amount of space for me to dump video files onto would be useful. With this in mind, I bought a 1TB Samsung 970 EVO for the second M.2 slot, so it's an NVMe SSD, although write performance will drop if the cache fills up. I did consider buying a Pro Drive to avoid this issue, but honestly for video editing I'll mostly be doing reads rather than writes, so I think this is perfectly fine for my use case. And the slightly slower read and write speeds are still pretty high. The Aero 15X comes with an Intel Wireless AC 8260 card which has a max speed of 867 megabits per second. I've picked up a newer 9260 card for just $15, which doubles this max speed to 1.73 gigabit per second, and it achieves this with multi-user MIMO, which will of course depend on the wireless access point we're connecting to and what it supports. The 9260 card also has Bluetooth version 5, while the 8260 has version 4.2, so that also gives us double the speed and four times the range for Bluetooth. So for just $15, we're pretty much doubling all our wireless capabilities. Again, you can find up-to-date prices in the description. If you caught my Aero 15X thermal testing video, you'll remember that under high levels of load, I did see some thermal throttling, although I could reduce this for the most part by undervolting the CPU. To try and improve this, I have bought some Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut paste to repaste the CPU and GPU as it's got one of the best thermal conductivity ranges for non-conductive paste. Liquid metal is also an option and would give you much better results, but I decided not to take that path here. I'm not sure if I'll need them, but I also bought some EK 0.5mm and 1mm thermal pads, as the heat sinks also come in contact with VRM chips, but we'll see that once we get inside. If you're getting pads, I'd suggest looking for Fuji Poly, which have higher thermal conductivity, Unfortunately, I wasn't easily able to buy them in Australia. Now let's get into the actual upgrade process. To open the Aero 15X, you're going to need a TR6 screwdriver bit. Use it to remove the 13 screws and take off the bottom panel. I did this using a plastic pry tool. At this point, I'm going to unplug and remove the battery before getting to work, and then start unscrewing the screws holding the heatsink in with a Phillips head screwdriver. Quick disclaimer before we get into the repasting. I've never done this before and this is my first time. This isn't meant to be an in-depth guide, I'm just showing what I've done. You can remove the old paste with isopropyl alcohol and a cloth, but I've got some Arctic Silver Arctic Clean here, which has both a thermal material remover and thermal surface purifier. The first bottle is used to remove thermal compound, while the second is used to prepare the surface for new thermal material. 
but these are by no means required, this is just what I'm using. You can see that in addition to the CPU and GPU dyes, there's thermal compound on a few other chips too. My concern going in was that a thicker paste may have been used here, rather than the same paste as the CPU and GPU, which would be required if there was a bit of a gap between the chips and the heatsink. While removing it, it did appear to be a bit thicker. This is why I decided to use some 0.5mm thermal pads, but it may have just been possible to use some other paste instead. I was also concerned about the thickness of the pads. If they were too thick, I might risk improper contact with the CPU and GPU, although this is pretty unlikely as the pads should compress under pressure, and 0.5mm is pretty thin anyway. After cleaning all surfaces, cutting and applying the pads, I applied the Cryonaut paste with the provided tool onto the CPU and GPU dyes. Next I put the heatsink back in place, screwed it in and plugged the two fan cables back into the motherboard. So with that complete, let's look at the before and after temperatures. Unfortunately, there was almost no temperature differences after the repaste. The only difference I saw was just one degree lower after the repaste on both the CPU and graphics while gaming. But otherwise, it seems like the original paste was about the same, still thermal throttling even with the CPU undervolted when under high load at 90 degrees Celsius. When we look at the actual clock speeds though, apart from exporting a video in Adobe Premiere, I was actually seeing slightly lower clock speeds after repasting, due to the thermal throttling. So a bit sad that I get less performance now with the same temperatures. I guess the next step would be to try again in case I messed it up somehow or go with liquid metal. Installing the second M.2 SSD was straightforward. Simply remove the screw, plug in the drive and screw it in place. The speeds from the new drive were actually a fair bit better compared to the original disc. I could have swapped them to use the faster one for the primary drive, but this is fine. Next up the Wi-Fi card. First you'll want to carefully lift up the two antenna cables attached to the card, keeping in mind which cable was on which connector. Unscrew the Wi-Fi card and remove it. Insert the new Wi-Fi card, screw it in, and reconnect the antenna cables in the same order. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to properly test the Wi-Fi card upgrade as my wireless access point is pretty old and can't properly make use of the features. Now let's talk about the final and most difficult upgrade, the memory. As mentioned before, I originally planned on installing two new sticks. Unfortunately when I did this, the laptop would just boot with a black screen and was not usable, a common problem others have reported when attempting memory upgrades with this laptop. I'm not sure why this was the case, considering I specifically bought memory listed as supported. It also didn't boot with just one of my new sticks installed. Either stick in either slot did not work, and both didn't work together. The only combination that I found to work was the existing V-Color stick in the opposite slot it came in with one of my new sticks in the first slot, and this was with the latest FB08 BIOS. In this configuration, it's apparently running a DDR4-2400 rather than 2666, so not perfect. But the times are apparently CL17, and will do for now as I still get the benefits of dual channel and also now a total of 32 gig. I let memtest run for 24 hours just to try and check for any obvious problems with the memory, and after all passes completed there were no errors detected. I'm not sure why I have to use the original vcolor memory, but I guess at least it works. I've tested a few games to see how going from single to dual channel helps improve performance with the Aero 15X. Far Cry 5 was tested with the built-in benchmark, and we can see there's a fair improvement with the dual channel memory. At ultra settings there was a 15.7% improvement to average FPS, and a larger 27.8% improvement to the 1% low. CSGO was tested with the Uletical benchmark, and there was a larger 44% improvement to average FPS with all settings maxed out, while there was an 18% improvement to the 1% low. PUBG was tested with the replay feature, and I used the exact same replay with both single and dual channel memory. At ultra settings there was a 28% improvement to average frame rate, and a larger 38% improvement to the 1% low. I've also tested exporting a 4K video with Adobe Premiere, and we're seeing the dual channel memory complete the task over 20% faster than a single channel configuration, so we're seeing quite an improvement with dual channel, despite the suboptimal speeds. Overall I'm pretty happy with the upgrades. The increased SSD space is nice, the extra Wi-Fi speed may be useful when I'm in a hotel uploading 4K video, and the dual channel memory configuration will help improve gaming and video export times. It's not ideal that the pace change didn't help as much as I'd hoped, with the thermal throttling that happens even with the CPU undervolted. Other people reported mixed results, including improvements to no change. 
so I guess my paste was alright from the start. Still interesting to know. It could be worth attempting again with the pads removed and using paste instead, but to be honest I can't really be bothered experimenting further. So for now I'll just leave it as is, as I'll need it in working order soon for CES. Let me know what sorts of upgrades you've got planned for your laptop, and hopefully some of this information has been useful, as I know many of you were waiting for this video before upgrading your own laptops, so I'd definitely be interested in hearing, especially your experience with memory upgrades. The Aero 15X in particular seems to be pretty picky, and as usual if you're new here don't forget to subscribe for future tech videos like this one.